zero comma one. True. Done. We still have to do general form code terminal. Let me student do that on Monday with you guys because you guys didn't have thought. Yeah, you were ahead, and then you got a little behind because yesterday. So you'll be back in time on Monday. Math. 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 Yeah. yeah. Jesus. All right. P of negative three pi. So can we look here? Is negative three pi directly on my unit circle? No, it's not. But is it coterminal on it? Yes. Yeah. So remember, on Monday, I'm doing this over the weekend. Monday, you'll get one of these. So if I start at negative 3 pi, that would be like <clears throat> 1 pi, 2 pi, negative 3 pi. What am I actually rounding on the same as? 20. In radian. Exactly. Pi. Pi. <clears throat> so this is actually equivalent to pi. Correct? They're in the exact same spot, aren't they? They terminate in the same spot. So if you actually find your angle, then you just land on it with your arrow, just put what the unit circle has on it, right? So negative 3 pi and pi are equivalent. And how do we know that too? Well, what we could do is we could just add 2 pi to it, because 2 pi is a full circle, right? So if I add 2 pi to it, it gets me a coterminal at negative pi, then I add another 2 pi, and it gets me a coterminal at... <clears throat> pi. So all of those would give me the same answers, right? Because they're all the same coordinate. What is the coordinate there? Negative one. one zero. Okay, seven pi over two throws people off a bit. So you can subtract three pi or two pi from it till you get it to land on it. So you could go seven pi over two, subtract two pi. But we wouldn't actually subtract 2 pi from the subtract fraction being common denominator, correct? So, I would have to put this over 2, which means I'd have to put that over 2. Do you agree? Yes. I'll multiply by 2, sorry. So I would get 7 pi over 2 minus 4 pi over 2, which is the same as 3 pi over 2. Because you just rotate it back one by subtracting 2 pi, right? So 7 pi over 2 is here. 7 pi over 2 is here. If I subtract 2 pi from it, I go back to here, which is 3 pi over 2. Because 2 pi is a full circle. 2 pi just makes you rotate in a full circle. So, for those of you who are freaking out right now because it's in radians, if you need to, you could convert it to degrees. How could I convert this to degrees? Do I multiply by 180 over pi or pi over 180? 180 over pi. Because it's 180 degrees over pi, and I need to keep the degree symbol, correct? So what do you get when you type that in? What's the answer? What's 7 times 180 divided by 2? So if it is 630 degrees, how could I go back a full circle? Minus 360. which is 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2. If you can work in radians, it'll make it easier for you. But you could convert to degrees. The catch is that you have to convert back to radians. You can't just like now write everything in degrees and say life is good. So this is actually the same as 3 pi over 2, which is the same as what? 0 comma negative 1. 720 degrees. Well, it's too big, correct? So how can I move it back one? It's in degrees. You rotate it how many back? You subtract 360. If it's 720, that's like this. 1, so that's 360. 
That's 720, right? I want to undo that because I want to get it back onto the unit circle. It's too big. So I subtract 360 from it and it lands on 360. So it's the same coordinate. You're just trying to find these coterminal by rotating it back. And when you rotate in degrees, you rotate a full circle of 360. When you rotate in radians, you rotate a full circle of 2 pi. So if, if you're in radian, you subtract 2 pi or add 2 pi. Yes. If you're in degrees, you add 360 or minus 360. So this one would land at 360. So this has the same coordinate as 360. What is that coordinate? 1, 0, 0. So we, <clears throat> using the above information, determine the coordinates on the unit circle at each of the following. So now we have point at 60 degrees. What's the point at 60? 1 half, comma, 3 over 2. 3 over 2. What about 7 pi over 6? Which is 210. Minus root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. What about 240? What about 240? Negative 1 half, comma, root negative 3 over 2. I think you guys missed it. It's a 60 degree reference angle, it would be a half of 3 over 2. You're not going to do it. 120 degrees? <coughs> Okay, negative 5 pi over 3. It's too little, correct? But remember, you could also look at these. Every single one you're doing here is you're going cos of 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees. So you could always check these in your calculator, couldn't you? Every single one. Because every single coordinate on your unit circle is cos of that, sine of that. We agree? So let's try this one out. It's cos of negative 5 pi over 3 comma sine of negative 5 pi over 3. The moment you press the cos or sine button, though, you have to slap your hand and ask, what mode do I need to be in? What mode do you need to be in? <laughs> you know we're mega math nerds when we make a joke and say degree mode instead of radian and everyone knows that it's actually supposed to be radian to be laughed. Uh, you got me. I laugh too. I'm in the boat. And <laughs> we're in this we're all in this large math boat of coolness. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so we get, for cos, we get 0.5. So what's that the same as? Half. And sine, we get <clears throat> 0 0.8660, which is 3 over 2. So we could use our calculator to, to, to do that as well, but we should also be able to do it algebraically. Negative 5 pi over 3 is too small because it's negative, and we wanted to get it to land on the unit circle between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi, correct? So what can I add to this to make it try and get it onto the unit circle? 2 pi. Yeah. So 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, which it's 2 pi over 1. I can't add fractions unless they have common denominators. Yeah. So we're going to multiply the top by 3, so we get a 6. Ooh, try to do that in the right, huh? Don't do this on a test. Do not write over the number. And then on the bottom, 1 times 3 is 3. And 6 pi over 3 is 2 pi, so it makes sense. Right? So we get pi over 3. Is that on the unit circle? The answer is yes. So we do uh, point at pi over 3 will be the same. And the point at pi over 3 is 1 half and root 3 over 2.
We're going to do F and then we're going to move on. G we already did above. I don't know why I just doubled up. We have 19 pi over 6. It's too big. I subtract 2 pi. Subtract 2 pi, but I need it over 6. So what's it going to be? 12 pi over 6 is the same as 2 pi, correct? Because I need a common denominator of 6. So that's going to give me 7 pi over 6. Really? That's crazy. How did someone's phone go off if no one's on their phone? That is crazy. <laughs> 7 pi over 6 is what? What's the answer? What's the coordinate? All right. <coughs> so, we can be given the... <clears throat> we can be given the cord. Oh my gosh, the angle and ask for the coordinate, or we can be given the coordinate and ask for the angle. Now, um, what you have to do is they they have to give you what your angle has to be in, and they have to give a restricted domain. Why do they have to give a restricted domain? Yeah. You could add 2 pi an infinite amount of times or subtract 2 pi an infinite amount of time and get a whole bunch of answers, right? So they this one nicely gave us between 0 and 2 pi. So can we give answers in degrees? No. It's the easiest thing to mark when you give answers in degrees because it's a 0. If, if the restricted domain is in radians, your answers have to be in radians. If the restricted domain is in degrees, your answer has to be in degrees. So negative 1, 0. What's that going to be as a... Theta. Pi. Root 3 over 2 and a half. That's in quadrant 1. What's it going to be? Pi over 6. Pi over 6. <coughs> 1 over root 2 is just the non rationalized form of what? <coughs> root 2 over 2. If you don't know what I mean, <coughs> you can, in grade 11, you were taught this, multiply by root 2 so that you can rationalize the denominator. When you do the bottom, you have to do the top. So we get root 2 over 2. So these are actually the same as negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2, which is? Some power 4. Nope. 2 pi over 4. That's what I was saying. And then this one's in quadrant 3, negative 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. So it's right about there. So what's it going to be? You have to rationalize the denominator. So if you multiply by root 2, that will become 2. When you do the bottom, you have to do the top. So you get root 2 over 2. One's just a non-rationalized version of the same thing. Okay. Now, what happens if you're given this? Determine the missing y-coordinate on the point on the unit circle. If you see anywhere in your test on the unit circle, I immediately say x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, why is that? I'll explain why that is. Previous to this curriculum change in 2012, circle geometry used to be in grade 12. Conics was a unit. But circle geometry has x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That is the actual equation of a circle. Okay? H and K represent the center of the circle, and R is the, what do you think? Radius. Radius, okay? Now, our unit circle is a special circle because it is centered around what? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. We agree? Yes. So I have a center at zero, zero, and I have a radius of what? One. One. So when I fill that in, <clears throat> I get X minus zero squared plus Y minus zero squared equals 1 squared, which turns out to be x squared plus y squared equals 1. So if ever I'm given um, a coordinate on the unit circle and it's missing the x or it's missing the y, I need to remember to use the x squared plus y squared equals 1 formula 
and I can solve it out because then I'll only have one unknown. Remember whenever you're solving for an unknown, you can only have one? This is the equation we're going to use. So it says point A, this is an extra bracket, let me just get rid of that. Point A is negative 4 fifths and Y, and it's in quadrant 2. Why is the quadrant 2 important? Sign. Yeah, it will dictate the sign of the y, right? So we know that we have a point on the unit circle. So we can use x squared plus y squared equals 1. This is my x. This is my y. So I get negative 4 fifths plus y squared equals 1. And then I get y squared equals 1 minus, not the squared, so this is 16 over 25, it's positive, right? So I'm going to subtract 16 over 25 over here. You can only do fractions when they have common denominators. So I can turn the, the 1 into what? Okay, turn the 1 into so I can actually do the math on this. 25 over... I can't um, 25 over 25. 25 minus 16 is... 9 over 25. And then I have to take the square root. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> when I physically do that square root symbol, <coughs> what do I have in front of it? Plus or minus. So I get y equals plus or minus 3 over 5. <coughs> because I'm in quadrant 2, what are my y's in quadrant 2? They're positive, correct? Yes. So my answer is y equals 3 fifths. They don't give you um, an answer, like sorry, a quadrant, then you'd have two answers, plus and minus. Because then it could be in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. Why do I say that? Because your x is still the same. Your x is negative, and x is negative in quadrant 2 and 3, so they have to limit you. B, C, D, go. This one has the X and the Y is still missing, so we'd have, um, we have X squared plus Y squared equals 1. Could we not just get it Y squared equals 1 minus X squared and start with the equation that way instead? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. So I have Y squared equals 1 minus 3 over 10 squared. So y squared equals 1 minus 9 over 100. Okay, now I need it to be over 100. So 1, I can turn to 100 over 100, right? So I actually get y squared, y squared equals 91 over 100. You know what we haven't done today? Gone back to grade 10. Welcome. You're going back to grade 10 again. So, Square root, square root, plus or minus. If you have any siblings in grade 10, could you please tell them to tell all their friends that we use grade 10 every single day in grade 12? No one believes me. I, you guys can see it. We use grade 10 almost every single day. Okay. So we have y equals plus or minus. Now in grade 10, you were taught this. You were taught that you can actually take an entire radical or you can split it into two radicals. And the only reason why you split it into two radicals is if one of the numbers is a perfect square and the other number was not. In this case, we find one is not a perfect square, but 100 is. They taught you in grade 10 that you can take square root 91 over square root 100. You get y equals plus or minus root 91 over 10. And because we're in quadrant 4, quadrant 4 is here, what does my y have to be in quadrant 4? Thanks, everyone. <laughs> okay, this one we're trying to solve for x. So we can do x squared equals 1 minus y squared. So we get x squared equals 1 minus 5 over 13 squared. I think my voice is sounding a bit better, I think. Either that or my hearing is going, which is slightly happening too. So I don't know if it's getting better or I think it's just getting better. <sighs> x squared equals 1 minus 25 over 169. And I need this to be 169 over 169. 
So I get x squared equals 144 over 169, which are both perfect squares, right? Yes. So then we can square root both, and we do the symbol, we get plus or minus. So we get x equals plus or minus 12 over 13. It's in quadrant 2. What is x in quadrant 2? Negative. So x equals negative 12 over 13. And then we have this last one. So 1 equals, oops, x squared equals 1 minus negative a half. Guys, do we even need to do this? No. What can you spot? That's a It's actually, value. it's a y value that's on the inner circle. It's one of the exact values, right? What value goes with a half? Root 3 over 2, doesn't it? If we're in quadrant 3, what is our root 3 over 2 going to have to be? So our x just equals negative root 3 over 2. If you spot that, you don't even have to do the math. Now this one wants to know <coughs> if each point is on the unit circle. <clears throat> How do you test if something is on the unit circle? People will look on their unit circle. Do you have every coordinate on that unit circle on the unit circle? No. <clears throat> no, you have 30, 45, 60, 90. You don't have all the decimals. So how can we check if it's on the unit circle? x squared plus y squared equals 1. So when you plug in your x and you plug in your y, it should equal 1. If we, if, could you also do like the cos of the 1 on the left? With like the cos like sign? inverse cos? Yeah, inverse cos. That works? You could inverse cos it and then inverse sign it and they'd have to have the exact same angle. That yeah, you well can check that too. Okay, if you're, if you're showing it algebraically, though, this is one of your things. Okay, try it out. When we plug this one in, we get 0 0.65 squared plus negative 0 0.76 squared equals 1. What does this actually equal? 1.0001. And this is 1. Is that true? No. No. So your unit circle has a radius of 1, right? It has a radius of 1, so from here to edge. This one is at 0.65 and negative 0.76. So it's like, let's say, here. Like it's just so outside of the circle, it's not on it. It's very close to being on it, but it's not on it. The radius is 1. Is this one on our unit circle? Yes. Okay, your homework. There's two pages, because it's yesterday's and today's. Letters are odd. <laughs> yeah, like A would be odd, B would be odd. No, I feel like A is even. Nope, because it would go with 1. No, because it would be 0. A is even, Bob. Not 0. Not letters, not you guys can do that homework if you'd like, or you can write this down. No. I only picked one letter from half of those. Like this one's converted degree to a radian. This one's converted radian to a degree. So I give you one. That's a lot of pages. <laughs> numbers, you mean? It's not a lot of numbers. Because I only give you one each thing. So we don't have to do the actual sign thing? Nope. <clears throat> I want to know. What if I 60 do? degrees is what coordinate? For every answer, you can give us a letter of what he is. Okay. Let's go. 1 over 2. And root 3 over 2. Nope. 7 pi over 6. Oh, yeah, that is back. Nope, that is. Oh, nope, it's right. 7 pi over 6. Negative root 3 over 2 and negative. 240. Negative one half. And negative root 3 over 2. 120. Negative a half. And. This is where it gets a little more complicated because they're not directly on. So we have to do 5 pi over 3, negative, plus 2 pi. So we're going to put this over 3 times this by 3, so we get 6 pi over 3, so it results in 1 pi over 3. So this is the same as the point at pi over 3. 
which is can we double check every single one of these if we wanted to yeah we could type in cos of negative 5 pi over 3 in radian mode and we should get a half and we could type in sine of negative 5 pi over 3 in radian mode and we should get 0 0.8660 blah 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 right all of these can be typed in 9 pi over 6 too big so we're going to subtract 2 pi which I need to be over 6 my to multiply this by 6 so I get 12 this is 7 pi over 6 which is the same as that All right. P. Is that like my clue? Yep. Okay. So <laughs> determine the angle theta and standard position between 0 and 2 pi. Now look here. 0 and 2 pi is in radians, correct? And that's just the unit circle, actually. So if you give me answers in degrees, how much are you giving? How many marks are you going to get? Zero, because it's asked for in radians. So let's find this answer. Negative one, zero. What is the angle to that? Pi. We can't say 180 because it has to be in radians. It's the right angle. It's just the wrong answer, right? It has to be in radians. Root three over two and a half. It's going to be there because it's positive. Both of them are positive. So what's it going to be? Pi over? Yeah. Now this, 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2 is just the unrationalized form of root 2 over 2. Because we have to multiply this by root 2 to get it to go away, right? So it's the numerator then 2. So I get 1 times root 2 is root 2. And then root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is 2. So these are the exact same if you look on your formula, or on your ooh, unit circle. And negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. And then negative a half and negative root three over two is here, which is what's it going to be? You are correct. 